I tried to draft this introduction for like 30 minutes to sound good, but really there's no better way to put this. This is one of the weirdest fucking games I've ever played. I am being completely serious with two E's obviously. Fate feels like a dream I've had, not a real product that you can buy right now. And be honest, you don't believe me. You think this is all YouTuber stupid tuber talk because it's not like this is some big deal game. And I didn't expect anything either. I mean, look at this character. Look at their fucking face. What is this? A game that looks like it is probably best enjoyed by five-year-olds and not by the elite, top tier, hardcore, sweaty, angry, salty, smelly, big brain, small dick, large bald, excitable, loud, in your face, unstoppable, Chad God gamers, right? Well, being fair, it's kind of in the middle of those two ideas. Fate is unassuming. It seems unremarkable. If you only spent an hour of time on it, you'd have nothing interesting to say about it. But then when you peel back the mechanics, you start seeing something else, a new picture, a game where nothing is restricted, where the most random, absurd, and unexpected things keep happening. It's like the madman mode for any ARPG. It doesn't make sense. Normally, I compose these videos by discussing some more consistent things like the gameplay, the theme, and the community support, but I've decided we have to live in the moment together. I want to run through fate at a rate more akin to a date. I will essentially wine and dine, show you a good time, and go through the lives of my characters because living in the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay might give you a better picture. Oh, and before we begin, this is not an easy game to record for some reason, so I just want to point out to this to everyone right now. See this? Yeah. Don't feel inclined to point this out. We are har and all that. I don't need no stick. It's going to be joining us, learn to live with it, enjoy it, love it, etc. Do what you want. All right, here we go. We're ready to make our character, but wait, what's this? Visit playfate.com. Instead of that, why not just the play fate right now button? Now it's time to create my character and oh boy, this game shows its age. Like I'm a big fan of old games. I've basically got sand in the brain, so to speak. So I'm not bothered with out of date anything, but wow, this shit is pretty sucks. So really because of this, there was nothing to think about. It was time to be Benjamin Franklin, but it's me. So I need more spice in my diet. So instead behold the glory of Ben fucking Frank and his, pa his pet spot on my ass. We're greeted to a scroll of text talking about the dungeon gate in the heart of the old wood and a lot of blah and a lot more blah. Let's get a move on. Ben Frank has some business to attend to you guys. He's got to get back to Philly Dow. So according to this, you have to traverse the dungeon and kill a legendary dark phantom. One Eric dumb as fuck the great found on level 47 of the dungeon gate. After that, the game begins and I start thinking that this is not possibly the best ARPG ever made because it looks like the flash game equivalent of Diablo 1, but never one to judge a book by its cover. I set out to explore. And by the way, speaking of Diablo, back when I reviewed Torchlight, I claimed that that game was just Diablo 1 with a fresh coat of paint. Sorry, that was wrong. It was literally a one-to-one -one copy of Fate. Equipable spells, a pet which eats fish to gain new strength, the exact same progression down through an endless dungeon. It's almost comically ripped off or made by the same people. I don't know. It could be either. Well, as the uh, so-called hero looking around this town, I can spot a few problems already. Firstly, you've got a zombie living amongst you all, so I'd kill him at your earliest convenience. Also a rat man and a penguin, and maybe I'm too late to fix this town. You might also just move more than five inches away from the dungeon gate, but you know, that's just my idea. All right, so after talking to all the people in town about who they need me to kill, I walked into the fabled dungeon gate and went four steps and hit a statue and it went wrong and spawned more Gazoon the Ancient and I slashed him about 40 times until he finally died and moved north and found Earth Stomper who was kicking my ass so bad that I tried to equip a ranged weapon I just found. But apparently you can't equip things that drop from the very first encounter so I bravely charged back in then tactically fled like a bitch to hit a barrel that exploded nearly killing me to just find 50 enemies that I could not take at all and then I ended up dying to a spider within one minute of starting starting the game. So how's your day going? Should have picked George fucking Washington instead. Need some more meat on my bones, it seems. On death, you get presented with three choices, all of which kind of suck. Either you accept the resurrection where you stand and lose experience and fame, both of which you really don't want to lose, or you warp randomly into the dungeon and lose some money, or you return to town and lose all your money. Or you can quit the game right here, so yeah, this seems like an easy choice. I take the warp into town and equip my new spear and think it'll help out here. It does not help me. At this point, I was puzzled. I know I'm playing on legendary difficulty, but I can't even begin to play. I'm trying to hit enemies, but they're just slapping me. I can't afford health potions to fight them, my weapons are useless, and I can't reasonably level up. But through enough scrounging, I go and kill Earth Stomper, gain a level, find a gemstone, and feel like things are starting to go my way. Maybe a skill or two would help me. What's happening here? Well, let me give you a little context to how the leveling systems work. Firstly, this menu has a few key features. You got your levels here, which upon leveling up gives you five attribute points and two skill points. By the way, don't mind that this UI is literally stolen from Diablo 2 as much as possible. Even the damn tip screen is ripped off, although I think everyone back in the day used this exact same design for some reason, as if someone playing a computer game had no idea what the keyboard was good for. 
Anyhow, attribute points make the sense you'd hope they'd make. You allocate them and get several perks. Since no gear in this game requires a level to use, attribute points end up being mostly good for equipping better stuff. The skill points, well, this is weirder than the average bear. You have freedom to use anything in the game, but your usage and mastery of them is ass cheeks. Investing points into a skill makes that weapon stronger and more accurate. But you have to build a bear workshop yourself. Why am I mentioning bears so much? Why am I putting meta commentary into the script? Questions we'll never know, but something we do know is that making your character gain the ability to crit and block is weird. It's like you're not even a basic character. When you start fate, you're essentially non-existent, just some Kremlin with an axe and no abilities. Also, at this time, I had no idea what these spell skills did, so we'll get back to that later. As for fame, you gain it when you do quests and kill boss monsters. When you get to the next level of fame, you gain four skill points, and certain pieces of gear require a certain rank, like local legend. Legend with the zombie and the penguin. So I roamed back to town, turned in a quest I had completed, and got a lot of money relative to what I had. Damn, look at that. So as I lurched back into the dungeon and found the second floor, I realized that I was not going to level very much in this game. Enemies are ridiculously strong and don't give much experience. Using a potion every single fight sounds awful, and since they don't do much for you, I was finding frustration in my furrowed brow. So Ben Frank would progress on in his dress, stabbing things to death slowly. My Tome of Town portal, did I mention this game stole Diablo's UI, was incredibly handy as walking Walking out of this place would be hell on earth. Back and forth I went, doing practically nothing. There's a kindly woman who heals you for free, so you're obligated to chat with her every 5 to 20 seconds as you play Fate. The blacksmith offers trash items, so the only way I could find new, better gear would be gambling. Unfortunately, this grifting pile of piss wants more money than God for a chance at an item, so back into the dungeon I went. On level 3, I begin realizing that there's strength in numbers as I'm getting a proctologist appointment from forced imps that shank me to death. I decide at this point that the game sucks and I'll return another day. I come back another day and realize that Ben fucking Frank is frocked and a new hero must arise. Now brought to life is Merlin the mother and his trusty pet, fucking magician. We get the same blah blah opening about the dungeon gate and then I learn that the final boss is completely random because we are no longer tasked with killing Eric Dumb but now poison kicker in the balls is my mark. So Merlin the mother begins the exact same way with an axe and a dream. Also, I get seven achievements for creating this character for some reason, which must be a great sign of things to come. And I almost immediately find Bat Crusher the Lurker and get Bat Crushed. So after dying and presented with this choice again, I decide to go with the second option and it just brings me to hell instantly. Almost immediately, some panthers eat my ass as I die again, so I try the second option again. And now I am on level five for some reason. I valiantly fight a lava beetle and die horrendously. I am now on level six and formulate a plan as I run away from liches, those bitches. I can scrounge a lot of chest and barrels here, and as I do so, the brain monster appears and I release my bowels, so I die again and warp back to level 5. Now I just want to become the human rat and find stuff that I shouldn't have at this level, so a bunch of fleeing from terrifying enemies leads me to an anvil, allowing an enchant attempt. Instantly fails, thanks game. And then I learn that stamina exists and wyverns, and death becomes me once more. Now back on level 6, I find the stairs and we're on level 7. Instantly hit a couple weapon racks and get two blue rarity items, but I'll let you in on a secret. Every item that's magical is blue when you pick it up, but in the menu, it could be purple, teal, or gold. I'm not sure why they couldn't just color them when they drop, but you know, it is what it is. For clarity, purple items are fairly bad, teal can be ridiculous or nothing at all, and gold is the unique or statically good items of the game. Then there's a clown car of enemies I've never seen before, and I flee in absolute terror only to run into the griffin and then the magic elemental, and holy shit, why is the enemy variety so good? I have seen entire games without this many different enemy models, and the fact that there's so many in the first seven levels is crazy, not to mention six different kinds all at once makes for colorful and dynamic battles, except sadly everything likes to just punch or shoot, so out goes the dynamicism. Anyway, a shaman catches me with a slow, I find horned boots, a rat man spear guy stabs me, and then I meet the yeti. At this point, I'm getting exhausted of this, but I realize something. That third option, the one that warps you back to town, it actually just moves you up three floors. That shit's abysmal, forget that. It helps me with my decision to keep going with the slot machine option. More nonsense running, more death, warp spawn again, then four orcs arrive, what is happening with the mobs? And I just bail on that. Bad stair click detection kills me and we're on level six again, then seven, then six again. Still level one for the entire time I'm doing this for some reason? Eventually, I find myself loaded with items and wanting to return to town and sell my loot. I find the useless in dungeon vendor and realize how spells work. You can purchase or find them, and if you fulfill the magic requirement, anyone can use anything, so the attack, defense, and charm magic skills all improve these effects. So I wanted some magic rats, and lo and behold, there we go, rats. Also, at some point, I apparently found a unique crossbow, so that's cool. 
I can't summon rats just yet, too complicated for Merlin, so I buy a town portal scroll, warp back to town, and identify my loot and make a pretty penny. Breaking out of the character retailing for a second, I have to deliberately explain something. This game has no balance at all with gear, and since gear is all that really makes you stronger, this game essentially has no balance whatsoever. As previously stated, you get two skill points per level, and you level incredibly slowly. So when a piece of gear gives around plus 10 to a skill, the word in my mind for that rhymes with mucked. Sorry, I've sworn plenty so far. I need to appease the YouTube lords by being a little more PG. So gear is pretty insane shit fucked lunacy when you get right down to it. Really, this goes ballistic. For example, you walk fairly sluggishly, but each piece of gear can have a pretty absurd movement speed buff. 14%, 20% haste spell to let you go faster. The game just opens up with gear. Not just that, but there is no system in place to make gear not sell for unreasonable amounts. So you can just make hundreds of thousands of gold by finding items you don't like and selling them. Take that money to the gambler, roll the dice and grow unfathomably stronger than intended. No joke, jumping ahead a little bit, I sell this item for over 1 million gold. Now that I've powered up, it's time to become Ball Crusher and Stomp Bat Crusher, gain our first level, use this crossbow and have the ability to roam through the dungeon much more consistently. For a while I was doing great, just getting some more skills for crossbow, some gear upgrades, shooting shit, and then I started having no power speed and just died rapidly. My rat spell was useless with the longest cast time known to man, my heal spell was pointless and I felt overwhelmed once more with my current setup. It was time to retire Merlin the mother and begin a more spell casting approach for round three. Now brought to life is Fireball in my ass and his trusty pet a dog can do it spoiler a dog cannot do it in this difficulty the tales now speak of broad thane in the membrane who needs to die so that the town is not quite so shitty now i knew what i wanted from the moment i began throwing huge fireballs at everything so we begin with the same axe swinging grind selling items for nuts money pumping the magic stack getting fireball from the vendor and then going back in with a high powered fun to use spell didn't work out. Spells don't feel good in fate, mostly because they deal way too little damage for their absurd mana cost, and secondly, half the fucking enemies are immune to something, so have fun trying to shoot the demons or the imps or the lava beetles, etc. On and on it goes. Your melee weapon is a stick, and it's dick, so that option is out. Your pet, who sucks, sucks and doesn't help. Look at this fight against Beast Caller. It exemplifies why spells are lame at the start. It's hardly doing damage, it's slow to cast, and I have to chug five mana potions. I labored with this underwhelming spell with the hope that Meteor, the buffed up fire spell would be worth it. So I grinded tediously, getting enough money and power to use the spell and found that it was pretty underwhelming and cost even more fucking mana than fireball. Eventually, the boredom of the tedium took me from the land of fun and delivered me into the realm of the title screen. Now brought to life is beating some ass and her trusty pet beating some balls. For me, this was an all in play. With a spear and shield, I became capable of felling yetis, an achievement I had yet to enjoy. The healing charm item proves to invalidate the usefulness of a healing potion, giving me eight heals per item slot. The haste spell was cheap and allowed me movement and attack speed. I had teal items, I was pumped, I was ready, so tell me why this game is so outrageously hard. This was getting continuously annoying because while melee is free to use and faster to attack with, it misses all day. All damn day. You just whiff, whiff, whiff. I was becoming frustrated after all this work again that I couldn't just beat this silly looking cartoon game that I needed to do something better somehow, but now what brought to life is done? cool. More yeah, great. That's trusty trusty pet. Yep, yep, yep. That. Dual wielding, all offense, all accuracy, quick and fast kills. I was determined to succeed with melee. It sounded great. I was excited to do it. Ram Whopper, it didn't go well. And against my will, just to beat this game and get a better idea of what's going on, I became a little bitch and put the game on easy ass mode. So, <laughs> For the final time, now brought to life is, yeah, whatever, fuck. And his trusty pet, yup. The brain was drained, you might notice. And guess what? Even on easy difficulty, this game is still able to actually kill you very easily. If you don't care about what you're fighting or what you're doing, you will still die. Again, I don't know exactly what became easier with the change. There's four different modes of play, but at least now he's able to go all the way down 43 floors, find my target, ran Thorn in my side, and vanquish him once and for all. The final boss is one of the most insane things I have ever seen from an ARPG. Not only is the target monster healthier than your average horse, but they're surrounded by mega boss monster army, which just beat the shit out of you. At this point, I was dual wielding big hammers, had a bunch of armor, and felt insanely strong. I could one-shot mega crit monsters, but I still whiffed 60% of the time. Eventually, through hard-fought determination, I won and was greeted with congratulations and a choice. I either quit now and retire the character while passing down one of my items to a new character, or continue playing forever. Literally forever, the game does not end no matter what. I chose to live up to my namesake and say whatever and also fuck, and move on to a new character. I find this system of inheritance to be cool because it's like a never ending new game plus. The item that you pass down becomes stronger each time and if you kept going on and on, the item would actually become a god slayer. You'd have to go through hundreds of levels to make that a reality, but it would be cool to see. 
Here's my final thoughts. This is certainly not the best ARPG ever made, but I'm actually going to say since it's simultaneously the weirdest and most basic one I've played, I want to give it another chance. I had a lot of fun with this one. It feels like a sandbox experience, so I feel like maybe I missed something. There's practically no boundaries. There's no limits. It's weird in wonderful ways. Sure, the gameplay lacks because it's so basic and the art and theme is whatever you call this, but I love it for whatever this be. There is also a nice amount of developer and community support with mods overhauling how some things work. In my opinion, if you're going to be stuck somewhere for a bit with nothing better to do, maybe give Fate a go. It's full of surprises with wonderful monster variety, weird everything else, and the gameplay that no one will find too complicated. So while it's probably not going to reasonably go up very much in my ranking just by playing it a few more times, I want to give the game a hardcore playthrough and try all that I can. But now that we're all finished up, there's nothing left to do except look through the characters and remember all the good times we had getting fucked by yetis. But since we're back to the title screen, let's hit this button down here now that I have nothing better to do. I'm curious what they've got to say about their own game. Thanks for playing Fate. Yeah, sure, was happy to, was fun. Wait a second, what's this? What do I spot here? Are more games, different names, ready and already sold, pretty old, and most definitely new entire experiences to play through? Oh, great, there's more Fate in my future. Call me a mooch, you're gonna have to suture my wallet with all the games that keep appearing. The video has ended. It is time now to go. I'll see you next time when I have something to show.